Let me find out my scripture here. Whoever has Bibles, if you want to turn in your Bible to 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 4. We're going to go all the way to the end of chapter 4 as I disappear from view. Miss Faith is saying, wait a minute, I got the camera on you and you're gone. You disappeared on me. All right, so chapter 4 in 1 Kings. You realize, Anaya, that if you're sleeping, it doesn't help you to bring your Bible. The Bible might make a good pillow, but it's not going to help you unless you're sitting up and reading it. All right. We are going to speak today, and today is Sunday. What month is this? Who March. Knows? March. March. 7th. 7th, good. Does anybody know what year it is? 2021. 2021. All right. And... We are going to speak about the wisdom of Solomon. Solomon. The wisdom of Solomon. And that's in, we're starting in 1 Kings chapter 4, verses 29 through 34. Now, who remembers? Who remembers who Solomon is? Anybody else? I know Hadassah knows. Hadassah knows. She's been through so many lessons. Who knows who Solomon is? Any ideas? Hadassah, tell us all who Solomon is. The king of Israel. He was the king of Israel. Okay. So he was king of Israel. And who was his father? Do you know? David. David. Okay, so he was the son of David. David. Not me, David, but uh, King David. <laughs> That's right. Does anybody remember what prayer Solomon prayed to God when he was first when he first became a king? Aniah. For wisdom. He said to God, he said, God, I don't know how to be a king. I don't know how to do this, God. You're getting into a lesson in school. They give, maybe they give you a homework assignment. You get homework in school? No? I do. You get, okay. Uh, I was starting to wonder. We always had homework in school when I was a kid. Long, long time ago when we used to write on stone tablets... And the school bus was a dinosaur. What? We used to ride a dinosaur to school. It was so long ago. It was so old. We rode on stone tablets. We went on horses. <laughs> and we always had homework. Always had homework. Oh, we still have homework. Okay, glad you guys have homework. We're gonna have to talk to your teachers. You gotta give your homework. Got to give you homework. I need to get. Got to give you homework. Okay, so anyway, you get an assignment in school, maybe a test or something like that, or, or maybe the teacher starts teaching something, and you say, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. Now, Solomon got into that situation. He said, I don't know how to do this. God, you may be the king. I don't know how to be a king. I have no idea how to be a king. I want to be a good king, and I don't know how to do it. God, help me. How do I do this? Give me wisdom, God. Give me wisdom. Aria, what did Solomon say to God? Uh, I can't be a, uh, a king. King? Give me what? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, couldn't. I was just telling you what the answer was, but you were busy talking. Here's, here's the rule, guys. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. You can put your hand down. When I'm talking, you're not. 
Okay? When I'm talking, you're not. You can talk, you, if you've got something to say about the lesson, then you raise your hand and I'll call on you. But if I'm talking, you're not talking to your friends. You need to be listening to me. Okay? So, what did Solomon ask for? Wisdom. Wisdom. Do you know what wisdom is? Something to guide you. Very good, because that, that was actually a tough question, and you did very well. Any other thoughts, Hadassah, about what wisdom is? Uh, Since you're the oldest and wisest in the class here. <laughs> uh, to lead you down the right path? Yeah. It's, it's knowing when to do the right thing. It's knowing what to do, when to do it. It's, so is, is wisdom the same thing as being smart? What do you think, Eliana? Is wisdom the same thing as being smart? No, it's not. You're right. Because I know a lot of smart people who are fools. They're not wise. They do. They may be smart people, but they do dumb things. And I know a lot of people that are not the best educated, but they do very smart things. So wisdom and, and, and uh, smart are not the same. What do you think, Bella? I was failing, and then I kept focusing, and I got better. Okay. Exactly. And so Solomon said, God, I need wisdom. And God was pleased with that. And God made Solomon the wisest person. Who would like to read? Anybody, anybody else? We've got one taker. You want to read? I'll, I'll give you the script. I'll give you my Bible, and you can read out of it. Oh, okay, you can use Arias. Excellent. Um, Anaya, are you in 1 Kings chapter 4? Yep, here. Let's find 1 Kings chapter 4. I uh, Oh, do you have it? No, you got 2 Kings. There you go. 1 Kings chapter 4. And let's, it's going to be down on the 20, oh, from the 20th to the 34th verses. So let's go one page over. Page. Almost to 5. Where's the big 5? Here, you covered it with your hand. There we go. So it's going to be down here. And I'll, when you see these little numbers, that's where we're going to be. That's verse 29, that little number. All right, Anaya, why don't you go ahead and read verses 29 and 30. God gave Solomon wisdom, very great insight, and understanding a, as vast. Good. Solomon understanding. It's in my Bible it says beyond measure. That means they couldn't measure how wise he was. And then again. Um, again, my Bible says breadth of mind. That means he he knew a lot of about a lot of things. Can I, you ever been to you ever been to the ocean? You ever, anybody ever been to the ocean? To the beach? Yeah? You ever been to the beach? You ever try to count the sand? The little grains of sand on the beach? Yes. Because you're on the beach, and the sand just goes as far as the eye can see this way, and as far as the eye can see that way. That's how far the sand... And if you tried to take a little grain of sand, maybe you take, take a, a handful of sand, and you try to count every little piece of sand, pretty soon you get tired and you stop counting. There's so many. You can't keep track. Yeah. And that's kind of the way Solomon's wisdom was. It was so great you couldn't even figure out how much wisdom he had. It, 
It was greater than all the people of the east. Let me uh, follow in your Bibles. I'm going to read verses 31 and 32. It says, For he was wiser than all other men. He was wiser than Ethan the Ezrahite, and Heman, Calcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahal, and his fame was in all the surrounding nations. He also spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. Bella, I'm going to let you read verses 33 and 34. He spoke that trees from the cedar. Cedar? Cedar in Le Lebanon. Lebanon. Yeah. Yes, sir. Reptiles. Reptiles. One more. Keep read thirty four also. Excellent. Good job. All right. So he spoke of trees. He knew all about the cedar that was in Lebanon. Cedars are a beautiful tree. And the, if you've ever, I don't know if you've ever smelled cedar wood, it's got a beautiful smell. Mm -hmm. There's a lot And uh, there's one right he here, spoke one right there. of plants. He spoke of animals. He spoke of birds. He knew a lot about reptiles. You guys know what reptiles are? You know what reptiles are? Lizards. A lizard is a reptile. What would you say, Eric? Alligator. Alligator. Is an alligator is a reptile. Snakes are reptiles. Yeah. He knew all the geckos. He knew all about all that stuff. Fish. He knew all about fish. And all everybody came to hear his wisdom was so famous that people would come to hear from him. There was this one queen. And she, her kingdom was down in Africa. And she came up, she traveled just to hear Solomon and he, hear his wisdom. The Bible says that he spoke 3,000 proverbs and 1,005 songs. Do you know what a proverb is? Does anybody know what a proverb is? There's a book in the Bible called Proverbs. A proverb... is a wise saying. That's what a proverb is. It's a wise saying. It's usually very short. Something that you can remember. And it helps teach you it, in that little short saying is a lot of learning. A lot of knowledge. Now, who remembers, we, we talked last week about uh, God gave King Solomon the wisdom to tell which of two women were lying. There were two women that had a baby. Each had a baby. And one of the babies got killed. And each mother claimed the, white, the live baby. Do you remember how Solomon told which uh, mother was telling the truth, which mother was lying? Uh, Matthias. So, he, uh, he was going to be... He was going to be like, uh, okay, so what if we cut it in half? So yeah. you can have it, and then the other mother can have it. Yeah. So then the mother, uh, the real, real mother, mother. Want, didn't want it, didn't want that to happen. And the other mother was like, okay, yeah, fine, you can. You can exactly. That's messed up, isn't it? That's really messed up. Two mothers, one whose baby had died, one whose baby was still alive, and both moms claimed the live baby. And how do you tell who's telling the truth and who's lying? Now, today we have tests that we could run and tell which one was the real mom. I think he wanted to see who had a true heart. Exactly. That's exactly it. God gave him that kind of wisdom to, to ask the right question to see who had the true heart. And he said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the live baby and we're going to cut it in half and give half to each mom. That way they can each have a half. That sounds fair, right? Each gets a half, right? Right, because what would happen if you cut the baby in half? It would die. 
Abigail to kill the baby. And the real mom was willing to give up the baby to preserve its life rather than to see the baby killed. So that's the kind of wisdom that God gave to Solomon. And those of you with Bibles, I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Proverbs. Now, it's a little farther back than Kings. Uh, you'll see a big book called Psalms, and Proverbs is right after Psalms. Go ahead and take a look. Go ahead. If your Bible's closed, go ahead and split your Bible in half, kind of like the baby. And what do you got? First Kings. Oh, you got where the lesson is. Let's come back a bit. There's the book of Proverbs. Okay, did you find it, Bella? Okay, there's Psalms. So let's go back after Psalms. Psalms is 150. And there's Proverbs. Okay, you guys got it? Now, I want you to turn in your Bibles to... Um, let's see. Turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 13. Did you find your, Oh, did you lose your place? Okay, Proverbs. Yeah, let's go back to chapter 3. Then you're at chapter 11. Chapter 3, verse 13. Okay, you're at 11. Good. Keep going back. There's 3. Everybody? Does everybody have it? I got it. Okay, find, find verse 13. Uh, verse 13 will be the little number in the page. So chapter 3 and verse 13. Is that, oh, that's 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12, 13. There it is. Okay, you had it. Good. Listen to what... Now, most of these proverbs that you find in the book were written by Solomon. Most of them were written by Solomon. And he says this, he says, happy, now your words might be a little different than mine, but go ahead and follow along. It says, happy is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gets understanding. Wisdom is worth more than silver. It brings more profit than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you could want is equal to it. With her right hand, wisdom offers you a long life, and with her left hand, she gives you riches and honor. Wisdom makes your life pleasant and will bring you peace. As a tree produces fruit, wisdom gives life to those who use it, and everyone who uses it will be happy. Now, that's making a lot of promises, but I will tell you that if you are a wise person, every one of those promises are true. Solomon wrote a lot about wisdom. I want to, I want to read a few uh, verses with you. Who would, who would like to read? If you don't, then I will read. But uh, go ahead. And I find chapter 15. Find chapter 15 and verse 20. You're looking in verse 15. Oh. Chapter 15 is going to be the big numbers. Okay. There you go. There you have it. And now we'll go with the little numbers down to 20. Hey. Oh, you're, this is 14. This is 15. 15 goes down the page and then down the next column. So go down to uh, verse 20. Okay, before you start, let me make sure everybody's got it. Did you find it? Chapter 15. Okay, chapter 15, verse 20, good. So verse 20. You guys got yours? 15, 20. Yeah. Chapter 15, verse 20. Okay, there you go. Okay, 17. Let's come back. One page. One page to do it. Oh, 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 oh. oh do it too many. One page. Back one page. There it is, 15. And then find the little numbers, verse 20. There it is. Okay. 
All right, does everybody have it? Anaya, go ahead and read it, please. Disrespect. Disrespect his mother. Okay. And I read a little different. Wise children make their father happy, but a foolish but foolish children disrespect their mother. Let me read another one for you. I'm not going to have you look it up, but it says, "Spend time with the wise, and you'll become wise. But the friends of fools will suffer." A fool is somebody who's unwise. They do dumb things. You, if you hang around with people who, who are wise, pretty soon you become wise too. And if you hang around with people who do dumb things, pretty soon you start doing dumb things too. Here's a big one. And I want to write this one down. This one's a, this one's a very, very important proverb. It says, it's in Proverbs 9.10. And it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You want to be wise? If you want to be wise, a very good place to start is to respect God. Now, when it says the fear of the Lord, that doesn't mean like you're afraid of spiders or you're afraid of snakes. That doesn't mean that. Excuse me. What it means is respect for God. So much respect that you obey Him. You do what He says because you respect Him. And when we fear the Lord and we do what God says, and we practice doing that, then we become wise too. Right, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read a few here. Listen to this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't depend on your own understanding. Remember the Lord in all that you do, and he'll give you success. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits from all your crops. Then your barns will be full and your wine barrels will overflow with your wine. These are wise sayings. Solomon is telling us to honor God with what we have, the money that we have. Honor God with it, and he will cause it to increase. Knowledge begins with respect for the Lord, but fools hate wisdom and they hate discipline. Here's one that I didn't, I hated this as a kid, but now that I'm grown up, I understand this so much. It says, my child, do not reject the Lord's discipline and don't get angry when he corrects you. The Lord corrects those that he loves, just as parents correct the child they delight in. Nobody likes to be corrected. Nobody likes to be told that they're wrong. My cousin, um, my actually follows the Bible and he's very good Yeah. A parent that loves their children will correct their children. I know you guys don't like that. Nobody likes to be corrected. I hated getting grounded. I hated getting spankings. My, my parents would spank us. I hated getting yelled at. Oh my goodness, my mother could yell. My mom could yell. Ooh, my mom could yell. Oh, no. <laughs> That's very true. His mom can't yell now. <laughs> no, no, she can't. Don't worry. When her voice heals, she'll make up for lost time. <laughs> Listen to this, though. Listen to this, though. We may hate being corrected, but accept it and obey because here's another proverb that Solomon spoke that whoever is stubborn after being corrected many times will suddenly be hurt without cure. That is... If you get a person that is so stubborn, that's okay, let it be. If you get a person that is so stubborn that they will not accept correction, they're going to grow up and get in trouble. They're going to constantly get in trouble. And you see people, they, they are not, uh, they're not obedient to their correction. And when they get older, they think that they don't have to obey the law either. And guess where they end up? In jail. They end up in jail. 
Here's another thing that Solomon was very, very, uh, he thought was very important, and this is wisdom. Part of wisdom is being kind to each other. Part of wisdom is being kind to each other, and that even means your sister, and that even means your brother, and your brothers. She doesn't have any, she only has one sibling. No, brothers. Um, we were talking. I was talking to Hadassah. <laughs> Listen, here's what, here's what Solomon says about kindness. It says, kind people do themselves a favor, but cruel people bring trouble on themselves. He also said, don't ever forget kindness and truth. Wear them like a necklace. Write them on your heart as if on a tablet. Then you will be respected, and it will please both God and people. Another thing he said is that foolish people are always fighting. But avoiding quarrels will bring you honor. Do you know somebody that every time you turn around, they're fighting with somebody? Do you know somebody like that? Me, mom, and dad. I'm not going to bust your mom. <laughs> my mom, listen, me and my listen, if you're fighting with everybody, you're not wise. It's wiser to make peace with people, to be at peace with all the people. Here it says, don't answer fools when they speak foolishly or you'll be just like them. Good people who live honest lives will be a blessing to their children. Good people hate what is false. Or another scripture says that, that the righteous hate lying. If you are a wise person, you will delight in truth, but you're going to hate lying. And you don't want to be around people who lie. Because you can't. You can't uh, trust them. It says here, the wise are patient, and they'll be honored if they ignore insults. Patience is better than strength. Controlling your temper is better than capturing a city. This is a big one. It says a gentle answer will calm a person's anger, but an unkind answer will cause more anger. Somebody comes up to you, and they're real mad at you, and they, they get in your face and start... And you got a choice. You can either calmly and gently respond to them, or you can get mad too and start yelling at them. And guess what happens when you do that? Next thing you know, you're in a fight. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Solomon was also big at working. He understood that hard work is a good thing, and laziness is not. He said, lazy farmers don't plow when they should. They expect a harvest, but there's none. Do you see skill, uh, people skilled in their work? They'll work for kings and not ordinary people. And finally, a lazy person will end up poor, but a hard worker will become rich. Real quick, Bella. Um, so, me and my family had a lot of trouble with working on people working. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, now I want to sum this up with this. This is, this is how uh, Solomon summed it up. In, it was actually in another book that he wrote. It says, Now, everything has been heard, so I give my final advice. Honor God and obey His commands, because that is what all people must do. God will judge everything, even what is done in secret, the good and the evil. In other words, God sees everything you do anyway. Everything you do. Everything you think, God knows. He knows your thoughts. So, it's better for us to be wise and control all that than to be foolish because we'll have to account, we'll have to answer to God for that. But number one, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you obey God, you're going to be a wise person. And if you don't, you're going to be a foolish person, and you're going to find yourself in a lot of trouble. That's just how the world works. All right, let's go ahead and let's close in prayer this morning. Actually, it's afternoon now, and then we'll have a little time to snack. Father, go ahead and bow your heads. Father, we thank you for this time, and I pray that that we would understand what it means to be wise, to practice wisdom in our lives. 
And Lord, I pray that you would bless everyone who has heard this lesson today. And now as we go have a, a snack, I pray that you would bless the food, that you would bless our time, and bless our fellowship together in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.